Hello everyone, my name is Jason Bergerson, and this video is going to be Introduction to Orthogonal Matrices. So far we've seen how to take a basis and generate an orthonormal basis. And one of the main reasons we did this is because we saw that that orthogonality of the basis allowed us to find the coordinates in this basis for each vector in our vector space very easily based on that orthogonality. But now we'd like to extend this concept of orthogonality and see what it looks like when we're talking about matrices and matrix subspaces. So let's investigate. We'll start by looking at an M by N matrix, U, and we'll say that M by N matrix U has orthonormal columns if and only if U transpose times U is equal to identity. So let's take a quick little look at this to explore this. If I have U that has orthonormal columns, here I've expressed it as its columns, u1, u2, all the way to un, those are the orthonormal columns. And if I look at u transpose, the columns are now becoming the rows of u transpose. So that's u1, u2, down to un. And if I look at that product, u transpose times u, I've got it written out here. Now if I do that multiplication, one way I can do that multiplication is by taking the dot product of the first column of u and the first row of u transpose. And that will go in the first, the 1, 1 component of my matrix as a result. So this will be u1 dot u1. And the next piece will be u1 dot u2. And then u1 dot u3. All the way dot to u1, oh, down to u1 dot un. And then we go on to the second column. We would take u2 times all the rows of u transpose. So this would be u2 dot u1, u2 dot u2, all the way down to u2 dot un. And we'd keep doing that all the way over along the top to un dot u1, all the way down to un dot un. So this is what our giant matrix would look like. But now if we think about these columns, they are orthonormal, which means if I take u2 dot u1, that result would be 0. In fact, any of these dot products between different columns of our matrix U would also be 0. All these would be 0. In fact, the only ones that would not be 0 are the diagonal entries, because here we would have U1 dotted with itself. And U1 dotted with itself would give us the magnitude of U1 squared. But these are orthonormal, so they have a length of 1, and 1 squared is 1. So the result here is a whole bunch of 1's on the diagonal, and a whole bunch of zeros everywhere else. And so what we can see is this is going to look like an identity matrix. In fact, we're going to get an n by n identity matrix. I also get a specific example. All right, so here I have a matrix U, and it is orthonormal. I can see right away that it's going to be orthogonal, because if I took the dot product of these two columns, my U1 and my U2, for instance, I can see I'll get 0 plus 0 plus 0. And also, if I took the length of u2, clearly that's 1. But the length of u1, if I look at the magnitude of u1 here, it will be the square root of 1 over root 2 squared plus 0 squared plus 1 over the root 2 squared. But 1 over root 2 squared is 1 half, so I get 1 half plus 1 half under the radical, which is the square root of 1, which of course is 1. So these really are orthonormal columns. So then I've written out what u transpose is, and then I look at the product. Looks like I have 1 over root 2, 0, 1 over root 2, 0, 1, 0. That's my u transpose. And I'm multiplying that by my u matrix. And the result will be, looks like I'll get 1 over root 2 times 1 over root 2. That's 1 half plus 0 plus 1 half, and I take 1 over root 2 plus times 0, which is 0, plus 0, plus 0, and I go through and use my second column here, and I will get 0 in that first component and 1 in the second component. So I really am getting 1, 0, 0, 1. Now, if we think of u as not being an m by n, but rather an n by n, so u is in the set of all n by n matrices, and it has orthonormal columns, 
Then we've already seen that we can take u transpose times u to equal identity, but because u is now n by n, that's the same thing as saying that u transpose is equal to u inverse. And if that's the case, then we will call u an orthogonal matrix. So this is the definition of being an orthogonal matrix. Now what are the other special properties of, being an ortho of having orthonormal columns? Well, I have three listed here. The first one says that the magnitude of u times x is equal to the magnitude of x. The next one says if we take the dot product of ux dotted with uy, it's the same thing as the dot product of x and y. And the last one says that if the dot product of ux and uy is equal to zero, that's true if and only if the dot product of x and y are equal to zero. Now really, these properties A and properties C are basically just saying that if we talk about the transformation that takes x vectors and maps them to u times x, that this transformation preserves both length and orthogonality. So for instance, if I have the length of my matrix or my vector x, and I were to take that x and multiply it by u, it's not really changing the length. These two lengths are equal. That's really what that first property is telling us. And same thing in the last one, that if two vectors x and y are orthogonal, then ux is also orthogonal to uy. So it's preserving those two important characteristics. I also got a quick kind of proof that will justify at least the first one, and then they can demonstrate how to do the rest of them. So we're going to look at the magnitude of u times x. Well, the magnitude is just the square root of our inner product, or in this case, our dot product of ux dotted with ux. But another way we can express that dot product is in terms of the transpose ux, that vector transposed, times the vector ux. That was another way we could express the dot product. But now I have some other properties. If I take the transpose of u times x, it's the same thing as x transpose times u transpose. Once again, I have that thing times ux. But now I look on the inside here, and I have u transpose times u. But if u has orthonormal columns, that inside product will just be identity. And so I'll be left with just x dotted with x. But the square root of x dotted with x is just the magnitude of my x vector. And that completes that proof. And the other ones we can prove in similar ways as well. So in this video, we've talked about when a matrix U has orthonormal columns. We've looked at the properties. Then we've defined what an orthogonal matrix is. It's an n by n matrix that has orthonormal columns. And that concludes this video. Thank you.